In this video, I'd like to talk about what exactly is polar form. I noticed there is a lot of misconceptions and it's actually quite easy to understand if it's explained properly. So first of all, let's consider Z in standard form. Z is equal to X plus Y J. J is our imaginary number and we got X and Y are just some sort of constants and we have Z is a complex number right just defining everything okay and let's draw our Z on an argon diagram or an, or an argon plot and all that means is on our uh, the vertical axes it's the imaginary units and on our horizontal axes it is the real units so if we were X in the real and y in the imaginary, then our vector that we can draw from the origin for z would look something like this. This is z. Okay. Notice that this is a right angled triangle. Okay. The vertical units is y and the horizontal units is x and the length of the vector or the modulus of z is often expressed as r. So using basic trigonometry we can find that sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse or y over r which can then give us y is equal to r times sine of theta. We have cosine of theta is equal to x over r because that is adjacent over hypotenuse. So isolating we get x is equal to r times cosine of theta. Okay now all I'm gonna do is plug in y and x into the equation for z and we get r cosine of theta plus, oh, and let's define theta make on our axes. Remember, theta is the direction that the vector z makes with the positive direction of the real axes, right? Okay, great. And then our y is r sine theta, r sine theta, and this is times j, okay? Factor out the r. And then we're left with r times all of cos theta plus, we'll rearrange this as j times sine theta. And now this is polar form. This is literally polar form. And what I want to point out is that this is just a different way of expressing the complex number. We need two things to describe the complex number. In polar form, that will be the length of the vector, r, and the argument, or the angle that the uh, vector makes with the, the real axes, theta. In standard form, the two variables that we need to describe the complex number is how far in the real axes and how far in the y axes. So it's just a different way of expressing the same thing. Okay, hope that makes a bit more sense of where all this comes from.